Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're looking at the JN66 Analysis Droid. Now this is a model of Analysis Droid produced by Cybot Galactica as a high-end utility droid. As early as the Rasuan reform uh, reformations of the Galactic Republic, the Jedi Order made a large purchase of JN66 units for use in the Jedi Temple's Analysis Wing. Uh, History-wise, um, after production began in, on the line, the Jedi Order purchased a large number of JN-66 to operate the analysis wing of the Jedi Temple. In conjunction with several SP-4 droids, uh, between the two models, the JN-66 worked with, the most, uh, with most of the equipment while the SP-4s handled the menial tasks such as direct Jedi interf uh, interface. All of the droids and their computers shared data with the Coruscant police, making it easier to hand criminal cases over to different jurisdictions and, in, and to ensure the comprehensive database was maintained. All droids in the temple were stripped of coverings uh, for frequent irradiation uh, baths so not to contaminate the analysis chamber. These models were not, or not only served at the temple, but also saw use in battlefield medical facilities during the Clone Wars, such as on New Holstus. Uh, characteristics, the JN-66 analysis droid was a repulsor lift equipped droid with four colored uh, photoreceptors with multi-wavelength imaging at extreme levels of magnification set into its flat face. Cybot Galactica reused the chassis uh, and many of the components found in the less sophisticated PK series worker droid and the JN66's framework also served as a basis for the company's IM6 Battlefield medical droid. Uh, they were fitted with advanced viral brains and sensors, sensor apps apparatus, if I can only read here today, uh, that made the droid an expensive commodity. So we got to see this in episode two, Attack of the Clones, uh, episode or uh, Galactic Battlegrounds. This has been in their Republic track down. Uh, let's see, we also have Essential Field Guide to Droids, Complete Star Wars Encyclopedia, Star Wars: The Official Star Starship and Vehicle Collectors, twenty or Vehicle Collection twenty eight. Uh, we have Data Bank, uh, which I think might be a um, a magazine of some sort. Let's see. We also have Star Wars: Republic Trackdown, uh, the new Essential Guide to Droids. So we do have a little bit here um, from where it came from. Now. What I can't tell you at, at the moment until we flip over is if this is from West End Games, from Wizards of the Coast, or where else it may have come from. Seeing that this may or was in Episode 2, I'm going to take a wild gander, gander and say it's from Wizards of the Coast. Uh, they may have been the ones that originally did the stats for this, and then it was then reverse engineered into... Our D6 universe, which is the universe I usually cover everything in. Okay, so looking at the analysis droid itself, um, we have a nice, nice picture of it. And remember, this is a a droid that that can kind of has repulsor lift technology on it. So, um, you know, of course, we have a droid that can kind of hover, which I always think is really interesting here. And it's something that we have in our Star Wars universe. So we do have a dexterity of 2D. So it is, you know, dexterity-wise, it's our, our galactic standard for most galactic beings. Uh, has a knowledge of 4D. So the overall skill set is a little bit above average, uh, about twice as, as average, uh, you know, uh, specializing in planetary systems, which it has an 8D plus 2. So, you know, this is a very intelligent droid in, in those regards, scholar um, we have electronics, 8D plus 2 Scholar. Uh, we have science, 8D plus 2 Scholar. 
Starship 8D plus 2 Scholar, and Weapons 8D plus 2. Now this is all for just trying to identify, analyze it, and report back so everything can be properly recorded. Um, so that's the primary mission of these droids. And it does make sense that it has, essentially, this would be a, a very seasoned uh, professor on these things uh, in, in, in that regard. Uh, has a mechanical of 1D plus 1, so, you know, it's, it's below our galactic standard. Uh, perception is slightly below galactic standard by being a 1D plus 2, although it does have investigation at 5D plus 2 and search at 5D plus 2. Uh, again, to help it try and look at things, try and discern what is what, why things were done in a certain way, um, especially for uh, trying to do crime scenes or if there was a battle somewhere or whatever may have you, uh, it can try and piece that puzzle together so it can come up with a comprehensive uh, telling of what the events were. Uh, we have a strength of 1D plus 1, which, you know, it's not the strongest <laughs> droid out there, but it doesn't need to be. Its, its job really does entail just trying to understand what's going on, what happened in the situation and all that. Uh, technical is a 2D plus 2, so it is above our galactic standard. Uh, has computer program and repair of 7D, which makes sense because it's going to take all that information and make sure it writes out proper reports. It can also investigate computers. Um, which is kind of interesting because uh, I have books where they do talk about computers and the different ranges from anything from a pocket computer to a full desktop computer and everything in between, including data centers and, and all that. Uh, but it's not something we typically saw in the telling of Star Wars. Uh, it's all stuff that you know comes in because of having to deal with other things to mesh it up with a little bit of our own reality. Because um, really, Star Wars is the telling of just a few people and just the adventures they're going through. But when you talk about cities, especially later on when the Jedi uh, rebuild the Jedi Temple and are working with police and everything else, you know, you need to fill in all the gaps of all the things that we would typically have. And they did a very good job in all the books. Give credit to all the writers that have written for LucasArts for over the years. Um, fleshing out the worlds that are, are being explained and added to and really kind of um, highlighted with all the things that, that go on, including, you know, anything from diners to restaurants to... Um, archiving from battles to, you know, when a, when a Jedi tracks down just a, you know, a pickpocket to whatever, you know, they've done a lot of work in all those novels trying to come up with that stuff. Uh, the, the pros and cons to, you know, Luke Skywalker after taking down Darth Vader and the Emperor and he starts using the Force more, how do people react to him? And they've gone into a lot of that stuff. So it really does open up a vast world and a, a vast set of consequences for having the potential to having too much power in one person or set of people. How does everyone react there? So, um, you know, you have droids like this, which get to document and, and go through archiving everything that has been done um, so you get libraries filled up with everything that that they have to cover you know just going through the mundane things that would typically be done in our own world today uh, it is equipped with comlink it has a diagnostics package we have an improved sensor package we have infrared vision uh, recording unit uh, which includes audio and hollow 
Uh, we have two manipulator arms tipped with analysis tools, uh, a repulsor lift unit, sonic sensors, telescopic vision, and a vocabulator so it can speak to most humanoids. Um, has a base movement of 10, so it's our galactic standard again, and it is only about one meter tall, although keep in mind it does kind of hover. So, you know, it's, it's, it's another mundane droid doing just the typical book work and, and archiving things and looking things over. You know, the Jedi don't have time trying to run around, keeping the galaxy all kind of safe and straightened out from all the adventures that were written in the old novels. Okay. Um, so quite often they would get back, they would relay it to a droid. The droid would then have to go and, and type up reports and everything else. Although, um, you know, like for us, it's paper, but they would call it a flimsy. It's not like they're writing it down on a flimsy. They're putting it into a uh, digital database and it can just kind of go from there. But it it's just the interesting takes on what is the mundane Star Wars universe look compared to our own. How do we fill these gaps? And here we are. So with that, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for visiting. It's always wonderful having you stop by. Hope you're having a wonderful day and we'll see you in the next video.